Welcome to Stranger Connections, where I celebrate wonderfully weird people and their quirky stories. I'm your curious beast and host, Lisa David Olson, the practically world-famous business humorist, interactive speaker, and connection queen. So reach out if you want me to help you reignite your team or event. Yeah, today I am so excited to speak with somebody who is really strange and a really great friend. He is a teacher from Wisconsin. Please welcome Nick Peterson. Woo-hoo! Hey, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Lisa. Appreciate this so much. All the way from another state right over the bridge from me. So That's welcome. Right. So this is your 36th year of teaching or something? You said 36th, 36, not teaching, but you said it was your 36th day of school, first day of my school. My 36th first day of school. Um, <laughs> pre-k all the way and then college and then picked up my teaching it is my 17th year of teaching special education at oh, home and middle school that so, is fantastic what's yeah. your favorite part about the first day of school or about teaching in general teaching getting to know some really cool kids uh just i, I get to work with some kids who um i think sometimes in middle I, because i'm a middle school teacher it's uh it's the most weird, strange time of anybody's life. Not only that, I get to teach seventh grade, which is the middle school of middle school. So um, I, I absolutely love getting to see kids and getting to know them in what can only be described later on as the most awkward couple of years of their life. And a lot of times, I'm, I'm hoping most of the time they look back in a little bit of a bright light and what for most people is kind of a kind of a, a dim memory, you know, that they kind of want to forget. But at the same time, like, oh, I had these couple of teachers I really appreciated. So yeah. Yes, and no I kids. know you are one of them. And people that are only listening to audio need to know that I've got the giggles because you have the mini hands on your pens and you are using them as if you were the Midwest hand gesturing person. So that is yeah. very lovely. I, you know, nothing's better for an audio medium than a sight gag, I thought. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> your juggling it, is on point. <laughs> it loosens me up. Yeah, sometimes I'll yawn and go, oh, with the mini hands. <laughs> Nobody watching this can see it and laugh, but I see myself do it and laugh because no, it's all yeah. wonderful to laugh at your own jokes too. Oh, you know. Oh gosh, yes. Well, I will be adding this to my YouTube channel, so that'll get oh, people yeah. over there. I remember when when I had a speak speaking gig earlier this year and ran into somebody. However, it turned out that your name came up, and that her son just you made a huge difference. And I can't remember if the story was. Like about music, you let him come in and do music or drawing or something. You just let him come in and do his thing. I let it. He's, uh, I know, yes, he was, he's a painter. He, the, this kid was an incredible artist. And I, I know the, the exact kid you're talking about. And I firmly believe that this kid could be a comic book artist as he grows up. That said, he, um, you know, he's also the type where school, like some classes weren't quite for him. And he, he need, he's one of those guys that just needed, needed a break and needed an outlet and it was hard because when you're at school it's hard to forget you're here so like even when you're taking a break you're still like i'm still at school this still sucks so i with kids um who maybe uh, need a more non-traditional approach i try to find like what makes them feel fabulous what really helps them escape and for this kid love drawing so i kind of used my room as like hey my room is your canvas buddy and he started painting the most amazing paintings all over my classroom at, for his break time. So, I mean, we both ended up reaping the rewards of his amazing talent. And that kid, he is going to be a, an amazing, an amazing artist. Um, yeah. That's I'm, so I'm, nice I'm very glad. I'm glad to hear that uh, families, yeah. uh, my, my, that they remember years from down the road that uh, what I'm doing is a bit validating, you know. Isn't that amazing? And you think about those that you don't hear the stories back. The stories are still out there. You just may not hear them back. So what you mm-hmm. do truly, truly matters. I, I love it. Thank you. I, Thank you. We're going to talk about your show, but I have other okay. things to ask you first. But I am doing the teaser that you have a show coming up Friday the 13th in October. So we I will do. tease that a little bit. I know it's comedy based in like 80s scare movies, right? Yeah, it's uh, 80. It's and not only is it 80s horror movies, it's 80s slasher horror. So you had to like really pare it down because you just say horror. It, there's a billion genres out there. And then <laughs> you get the... Uh, the, the the snobs who will will very poignantly tell you now it's this type of horror that type. so it is 80s slasher horror um it's called 
the Camp Crystal Lake Comedy Bash, and uh, it's a sketch comedy show combining the elements of of classic horror movies, all the tropes of horror movies. So it's, but instead of it being a sketch comedy show where it's like this sketch and then this sketch and all these kind of random pieces, there is a through line of a story, much like a ho classic horror movie, um, but it's not much of a story, much like a classic horror movie, and uh, everybody dies. So, well, Spoiler. Yeah. So is there a part in it where girls are in matching underwear? Because, you know, that's that's immediately where you get in trouble in any kind of movie where somebody's after you. If your bra and panties match, you're out. I, I never wear match sets. Really? Yeah, there's some sort of, you never see them in unmatched sets. So us, we gals, mm -hmm. we like to sit around in match set underwear, eating popcorn and watching TV. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. this is the way the movies go. So accurate. Mm -hmm. so accurate and yeah. so then one of us hears something i'll be right back hands the bucket over to to sheila you have you hold the popcorn i'm gonna go outside and see what i heard mm -hmm. i never come back yes you know go investigate sounds don't turn lights on um <laughs> don't bring your don't charge your phone don't charge your phone if you see a stick or a root step over it and trip on it you know uh there's a lot of great rules of of horror, yeah. There's a lot of that, and and there are a million tropes in this show that we, um, and most of them, like you don't have to be a horror movie fanatic to know those tropes, right? And I've I've had a number of messages from people asking, well, do I have to love horror? Like, no, you really don't. Do you know who Jason Voorhees is? Great, come on out. You're gonna have a great time. It is. Have you ever played ridiculous. hockey? Do you know what hockey <laughs> is? You're in. Exactly. <laughs> that is so fantastic. Now, are you gonna ask people to dress up for the show? I never thought about that. I, I think about it. I, I I would encourage, I think it'd be great if people dressed up. I haven't been advertising it that way, but uh, if people came dressed up, I'm not going to dismiss them. I think it'd add to the party. It'd be fantastic. How would we know? It's downtown mm -hmm. lacrosse. How would we know? <laughs> so just, just normal. Come on in. Yes. That could be a really fun uh, party event. So we'll give yeah. more info towards the end. Now I'm going to, yeah. um, I'm, I'm excited about that. How big is your cast? Oh, uh, we have a 11 person cast with a couple crew. We have a videographer who's going to film the show for us. Um, most of the cast are local theater and comedian people, uh, co comedian people, comedians, comedian peoples, uh, just, yeah. People who do the commodities, yes, um, they're making the laughs, they make the, laugh, the giggles, <laughs> um, a number of people uh, from that I've worked with in comedy over the, over the past who are lending their creative juices and energies to this. Uh, and then a couple people who are really into horror, who have kind of been like consultants for me um, to make sure that I'm uh, not, you know, confusing Jaws 2 with Jaws 4 or something like that. <laughs> that would be just can't have so that. bad. Oh, Jaws 4 is the revenge, not Jaws 2, Nick. Oh, <laughs> so Which one had the fish in it? No. <laughs> I'd love to call a shark a fish just to upset my husband. It's a mammal. It's it's an animal. It's a mammal. It's not a fish. But isn't a fish a mammal? Well, you're the teacher. I don't. It know. is not. No. Okay. Well, sit down, Lisa. Let's talk about. Let me get the hands out. <laughs> you see, Lisa. Now I got the pointers. <laughs> sharks are fish. Whales are mammals. Okay. So. That's it. That's probably yeah, where something. I messed up. Certainly, my mm -hmm. husband didn't mess up. Okay. <laughs> just got some uh, interesting lessons. Mm -hmm. So a romantic comedy is a rom com. Mm -hmm. What's a slasher comedy then? What's a slasher comedy? Uh, I was gonna say a horror com, but uh probably the wrong clientele coming in. Um, oh, that was low hanging fruit. You set that ball in the tea, Lisa. You know it. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> horror com. I I don't know, but you know what? I um I was thinking about like writing up some summaries and and for the show and doing a press release and i was trying to think of how do you describe this show and why it why it somehow works why like i've been doing comedy for the sketch comedy in particular for 12 years and for some reason the horror comedy sketches i do for the most part almost always work and i don't quite have my finger on why it works but all i know is that when you go to the movie theaters there's usually two sounds you hear coming from the movie theaters it's either laughter and screaming and for some reason that venn diagram has to cross over somehow so i'm excited to see how this whole show this hour long show plays out of just combining the two elements all horror all comedy but you know there's i mean there's plenty of horror comedy movies out there that i, I are, have become kind of american staples like um you know the evil dead series or tuck and 
Tucker and Dale versus Evil. You know, there's some great um, Shaun of the Dead's another fantastic one. Yes, too. yes, yes. I, I see mm -hmm. that Venn diagram as the comedy, the horror, and that middle section is just your mm -hmm. face because you made this. <laughs> it's just your face. This, this show. <laughs> <laughs> but you've done some really cool videos similar. Wasn't it just last year? And you did the incredible teasers up to the scary video and oh that's my family horror through. movie yeah yes yeah. Mm -hmm. the, part of the, uh, the inspiration behind this was uh back to the dreaded the new c word is covid um it was my, my kids were still in elementary yeah my kids were still at were elementary school and uh, halloween was essentially canceled and but they it was like one of the last years they were actually going to trick or treat so we thought we got to do something for halloween so they wrote a horror movie, a zombie movie. We filmed it in the backyard and edited it together. Got costumes and wrote a whole script and did everything. And, and on Halloween night, we showed the horror movie to the family um, in safety of our home and then shared it with people and had popcorn. And, and we ended up having a better time doing that than we do like oh. going to people's strangers' houses and asking for candy. So it, that became a staple in our house. Oh. And that kind of slowly turned into partially what turned into the show because the feedback from that was incredible. And obviously the experience of doing something like that with my family and my kids and my wife. And and it was, yeah, just this really cool bonding experience that like reinvented Halloween for us. But what fun. And I know that you are an improv yes and person that absolutely has to be in the house as well. Mm -hmm. That's the way my house runs as well. And I know I you leave your phone out way too many times. The kids get a hold of it. There's all these selfies and close ups of nostrils and whatnot. But yeah, I think your family I, is never going to forget these experiences mm -hmm. that you create for them. I, I agree. And you know, like, I, I love that relationship I have with my kids, that yes. loving relationship that is expressed with comedy that doesn't have to be it's not cruel. It's not painful it's harmless it's fun but it's also like it's a very personal funny thing that it that's they're being a little bit vulnerable for you and you find this little surprise in this little moment that they did and they went out of their way to do it and it's just you laugh you share it but in the moment there's always that oh my kids love me so damn much it's just so awesome you know she hid in a closet 22 minutes just to scare me she's love that's better than a father's day card are you kidding me mm -hmm. that is great and so how many kids do you have? I have two. Two girls, eighth grade and sixth grade, two middle schoolers. So. Which one's your favorite? Mm, whichever one is uh, not with me. No. Um, <laughs> Whoever's room is the cleanest. <laughs> yeah. Whichever one uh, uh, is, um, I don't know, punchline, losing it. I don't know. Like they. What's cool about them is, is, is not that they're like so – like similar people to me or my wife, it they're such unique, incredibly different individual people. Like their hobbies are so different from my wife. And a lot of times kids take on the hobbies of their parents because they're living what mm -hmm. they know. But my kids have really found their own path. And I think that that alone has bolstered our relationship because we are interested in, in their hobbies as much as they're interested in ours too. So like my daughter plays soccer and I've never even been to a soccer field in my life. And she's a fantastic soccer player. So she can teach me along the way, just like when we do these horror things, I can, or the comedy stuff, she's interested in my stuff and I can teach her. So it's like, we have four very unique people in the house kind of doing their own thing and doing their, having their own path. So it's, it's really cool. The dynamic it really is the cool thing. And, and that's the way my house always will be as well. I, mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're not funny, you're not welcome to be in mm -hmm. my family. You know, I used to have three kids. So I have two mm -hmm. sons that came out of me and then we share five. We used to have six kids, but the one didn't get the humor. So you're out. Okay. Hit Sorry. the road. That's okay. <laughs> yep. So, so is Todd one of those? Todd's one of the kids too. I'm assuming he's just. Oh my gosh. That man. <laughs> what would I do without that man? But he's pretty awesome, dude. You said about the girls having hobbies and such. Let's mm -hmm. talk about Nick Peterson's hobbies. Oh, I'm go through this quick. Tell me what I miss. Yeah. Okay. Just recently made, oh, a shed. I think I'll just make a shed with a sitting area. <laughs> he makes wine. Oh, mm -hmm. not just wine. You want sour cherry, pear, concord grape, dandelion. Mm. He refurbishes catcher's mitts. That's got to be really satisfying. That's fun. And then he yeah. also tells you how to do it if you want to. He's going, mm. he, you, are going to Goodwill and picking up these old mitts and making mm. them look better than new it's amazing 
Yeah. And then I just give them away, just give them to a kid. There's always a kid who needs Aww. a new glove. You know? I don't really why. It's just fun. You know, it's like, yeah, it, I don't that know. That is so cool. Yeah. Don't I mean, what kid doesn't want a brand show? Oh, no. <laughs> what kid doesn't want a brand new glove? You know, it's cool. So. Oh, you're so. I don't sweet. want any money out of it. You know, it's just a. Uh, no. It was one of those hobbies. I did that in. Uh, it was my college job. Um, bef- uh, uh, that I you, I used to work at a sports shop, and I had kind of had a side hustle when I was there. I used to refurbish gloves, and it was one of those. That was one of the hobbies that like, I did as a kid only for money, because uh, I needed to survive. And now I do it, and it's just for some reason as an adult, I just the enjoyment of like sitting there and keeping your hands busy while you're watching TV or something like that, restraining a glove. I don't know. It's just. Yeah, and there's something like people have a sentimental connection to their old their old mitt, you know. Even if they haven't played in 40 years, I just restrung my neighbor's glove, and it's a 50 year old Rawlings. But we played catch in the in the street for about 20 minutes afterward. He hadn't played catch in like 15 years, and it was just like this amazing, oh. cathartic, <laughs> beautiful moment of like, oh my god, this is awesome. But yeah, it's... you are a memory maker. Do you ever oh, see that? You. you just you create these moments. I love that. You, you also uh, grow enough things that you're making your own tea blends with your mm-hmm. your herbs or herbs, as one of my London friends says. <laughs> you make guitars. Mm-hmm. You've made soap. You're a mm-hmm. songwriter. You're a comedy writer. You mm-hmm. love wine corks and you just love the art. So you drink the wine uh, so you can have corks to do art. Yeah, with. that's the reason. I just put the art. <laughs> and you make mm-hmm. jelly. I do. And you roast coffee beans. Mm-hmm. You do epoxy art. I was mm-hmm. stalking you big time. Paracord <laughs> bracelets. Let's throw those in there. You're a gardener. Mm-hmm. News parody keeps going. And <laughs> yeah, burning. Wisconsin news today. Yeah, so we'll mm-hmm. go back to that. But wood burning. Yeah. You were, you mm-hmm. picked up surfing. You said this could be my last post as you stood there with yeah. your surfboard. Yeah, I, I learned in YouTube in ten minutes. <laughs> not the way to do it. The uh, way to not do it. Yeah, it was awful. I got up. Uh, I was on the board for a, go- a solid three to four seconds. I counted it because oh, I got my feet on the board. How many Mississippi's? Like two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Hey, at forty-one, you know, it's like I, I tried something new. I think that's a win. So and that is. And then you <laughs> made a shadow box. You've done some wire yeah. art and mm-hmm. palette everything. You made a palette bathtub. Yeah. Probably you made palette well, tables, uh, palette wall hangings, palette everything. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah, I yeah. I know I missed some, but that I just thought I would stalk you. Well, you're just you. so fun to look at. But you'll mm-hmm. also do, you know, you'll tell us how you're doing it. And I know that mm-hmm. if anybody wants to know, you would do that. But you mm-hmm. should be having your own little demo channel or something. Yeah. But who's got time when you've got all those hobbies? You know, I, you know, I get that a lot. It's like, how do you how do you find the time to do all these? And I, it's surprisingly like it's not like i'm up all night working on these projects or anything um but i do like if you're someone who wants to get into doing more hobbies and getting things i think what's what's helped me is i start i started treating my time like it's a commodity i started treating my time like it is a very valuable precious thing that if I, i don't like to waste it on things i don't like to um nothing wrong with like unwinding and then at night watching tv for a while or something like that but I don't like doing more than like 30 minutes. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? I I have trouble sitting for longer than that and doing nothing. Um, And I think that there's nothing wrong with being sedentary and just being lazy once in a while because your body needs it, your mind needs it. That said, I think there's, it's easy to justify that need when really what's happening is you're kind of, we kind of get into these habits of like, what do we, you know, wake up and sip coffee for a couple hours. What am I doing? I don't know. And I just kind of see it as like, I, I w- what fills my cup, what makes me feel um, fabulous, I guess, is, is seeing things that I love and tr- wanting to explore them. So I really don't have a big interest in coffee per se. I just love the way it tastes and I wanted to try it. There's a little bit of light chemistry behind it. It's not that expensive. It doesn't take a whole lot to do. And once I tried it, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so much cheaper and easier to make. Now I just make it on my own. And people are really interested by that, but it's like, it it really, it was more of just like, I see this thing, I want to figure out how it's going. And then now when I have my morning cup of coffee, when it's from coffee that I've made, there's already a sense of accomplishment in my day. Because it's not like I'm just taking my couple Folgers and just going through the monotony of like, I'm just drinking the coffee because that's what I do and get my, my kick of caffeine. It's now, I made this, I created this and I'm, this is 
part of my day is the things that I've done. And, and my day already has value because I've done something that's helped myself later on. And as silly as it sounds, maybe may, it sounds a bit like a motivational poster. I, I Those little moments now, because I do all of those things, like validate myself constantly. And I, I love that feeling of of eating dinner with food that I've grown in the garden. That's like that. There's something that tastes better about it. You know, it may not taste better. It might have bugs in it, whatever. But it's there's something <laughs> really good about it. You know, I think people who like make big dinners for people understand it because they 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 love the feeling of feeding a lot of people and all the love and energy that went into their meal and the preparation. I harness that, but with everything else. The shed is a great example of like, I love that tonight when I get home, I'm going to maybe pour a glass of wine or have a decaf cup of coffee and sit out there while the sun is setting. Like, And knowing that I built this thing adds to that a feeling of, oh, it just feels makes me feel good, you know? Oh, that's incredible. And I think a lot of people feel that and want to do it, but you are just so, you don't come across hyper- but you are probably mm -hmm. not sitting still that long. I know I know no. you'll sit with your dog for a picture or something, but then you're up mm -hmm. and out. Let's let's be clear. You've lost like half of your body weight since last mm -hmm. year. You I have lost 150 pounds in 14 months. Oh Yay. my gosh. And I don't remember yep. you being large like that, but I saw that yeah. picture of you and I forget who was with you in your pants, like one pair of pants, two bodies. Mm -hmm. That yeah, was incredible. Yeah. Yeah, my older daughter and I, uh, no, 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 my wife and I um, were able to fit into one of my original pair of pants. I, you know, I got into the, well, the, again, the C word, COVID. Um, I, I, like a lot of people, I became sedentary because I had to do this all day. I was just sitting all day. Right. And I was at my house. So I walked through the kitchen a lot and I started snack. And then, you know, I fell into a bit of a depression like a lot of people did. And what's right. one of the things that make you feel good? I'm just going to snack and eat. So I was already pretty heavy and then got bigger and bigger. And, um, Long story short, uh, made some really big life changes and um, really committed to it and uh, feel great. I feel like I got my body back, you know. And, oh, uh, and yeah, you, you look very fit. And the main thing is you not Thank only you. look good, but you are feeling good. And you I are, I'm sure your students and your, your kids are just like, okay, we can do this. And you're very mm -hmm. motivational just yeah, by, yeah. by doing your thing. You're not you know, mm -hmm. telling others what to do. But I think it was weird for my students last year the most because my last year, my students saw me during the nine month course of the school year lose about 100 pounds of the wow. 150 from day one to the last day. And they got about halfway through the year before they started going like, well, are you OK? Is, is, is something <laughs> wrong? Uh, no. And I are just, you fit or sick? Yeah. Like, then yeah. You yeah. Know and I make a lot of that. <laughs> you know, the weird thing about losing this much weight is there's I, people notice uh, they're just gonna notice is you get a lot of schools of like everyone wants to ask which i'm pretty cool with it but i get the weird like some people ask because they've gone on the similar journey you know i their their health is maybe deteriorating like my was mine was um they you know pre-diabetic and they they need to do a life change because their life depends on it i like having those conversations sometimes i get the messages of like yeah, I need to lose 10 pounds for bikini season, Nick. What's the secret? And it's like, well, <laughs> slow down, slugger. You know, this wasn't bikini season where, right. you know, for me, this was like, I need to do this or I was going to have a heart attack before I was 50 type of change. So right. um, my motivation was really big because, you know, I, I want to play with my grandkids someday. Yes. You know? Right. Not soon, but someday. Exactly. Not soon. <laughs> no. Ugh. And so you went the route of a nutritionist. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, long story short, because that that could be its own conversation is um, it, it really boils down to eating less, exercising more. Um, and that first month in particular, like most people get on the fad diets, nothing against fad diets, because it really is about finding what works for you. It's not about this is what works. That's what works, which is why I always feel weird about giving any type of advice. Right. Really is about there are things that work for everybody, like being mindful of your calories, no matter what bad diet you have, it's all about being mindful of the calories you're, you're putting in your body and then going from there, obviously, well, what type of calories and, you know, I went, this, I saw a nutritionist, um, uh, and, um, yeah, the, the first month and two or two months was incredibly difficult, but like anything, it's like reconditioning your mind with your body of like forming new habits. And, um, I would say this losing of 150 pounds was by far the most 
physically challenging, difficult task thing I've ever done in my life. That so, is so, yeah. so impressive. And, and just, you. it's great. And you're right. Stick with the professional and mm -hmm. do it the right way. Cause the fad diets, what happens is you get off of it and boom, you know, Oh, do this, oh, yeah. thing. do this thing. Right. And then get it all back. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta find your new normal. Mm -hmm. I did them all and not, yeah, none of them worked for me. And it turns out, oh, I didn't need a fad diet. I needed consistency and professionals. I needed to go see a doctor. So that's always my recommendation. It's like if you are, if your health is suffering, get a, make an appointment, go see a nutritionist, go see a doctor that right. start there and then, then move forward. Don't ask me because I don't know shit. <laughs> well, that's excellent <laughs> advice. Yeah. And now I want to go back a second here to the, mm -hmm. um, your parody writing for news articles. So oh, sure. give a little background on that. I know you're doing more of a local one in lacrosse and now it looks like you're mm -hmm. going statewide. So how can people find that? Sure. Uh, I started, got my start with Sam Schultz, started a, a local parody called the lacrosse times, which focused more on lacrosse based articles. Um, then that was a fantastic, a nice fun, another C word COVID project that we, that he did. That's kind of uh, you know, as, as life has happened, we've all kind of gone our separate ways. But um, there's a team in Milwaukee doing a, a magazine called the Wisconsin, Wisconsin News Today. And my friend Ryan runs this. And that's it's more statewide articles, but they, you can tackle some nationally um, run articles. And that is on basically all social media platforms, Wisconsin News Today. Um, and it's... Uh, uh, that's been it's fun dipping my toes back into that satire i don't i use a pen name uh, i am dr um what's my name dr uh dong something jo oh john J dr jonathan h dong um that's my pen name yes so uh dr dong yeah, it's mm -hmm. very nice now we yeah, know so who you are dudes. <laughs> yeah, it's out of the bag all the but, secrets uh, come out on stranger connections that's all i mm -hmm. can say <laughs> And then how um, can people get tickets to the show that's Friday, October 13th at the Maine in La Crosse, Wisconsin? Yeah. Well, you have or are to, there um, tickets left? Because we don't know this. There are tickets left. Uh, uh, Probably you go to three. Event. Probably just What's three. That? Three or four. Yeah. So I, I would hustle everybody and then um, get as many as you can. Um, tickets are only $15. I think that's a big selling point. So I really tried to work on making sure the cost is down, but the money we're making from this, all the proceeds are going to the Mississippi Valley Conservancy. Um, $5 of every ticket is going to that. And then the rest of it's going to the performers and the venue. Um, to find tickets for this, we do have a Facebook event page. If you search for Cam uh, Camp Crystal Lake Comedy Bash or go to eventbrite.com, Camp Crystal Lake Comedy Bash pops up right there in the top. Um, and, or the, the link to that is on the Facebook event page as well. Um, like I said, $15, you get them in advance. Um, at the show, we're going to be having, um, a, a silent auction and at part of the silent auction are all of the little things that you talked about earlier. All of my passion projects are being uh, auctioned off. So some of my woodworking and winemaking and epoxy projects. Those and trays, my yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So auctioning them off knowing that they're going to go for pretty much pennies on the dollar uh one and all that all of the money being raised for that is going to the mississippi valley conservancy obviously they, they take care of our hiking trails and basically making sure it, that the Cooley region stays as natural and as beautiful as we know and remember it it's a very important mission that i'm very passionate about um, being an environmentalist so i want to make sure that they have the monies to fund their mission to continue to protect the Cooley region i love From that idea Barbara. Thank Can you. we rename that the silent scream auction? <laughs> I am now. <laughs> well, it's silly of me to ask, but I'm going to ask you, can you share a dare or prank? One that you just one that you've done or had done to you. I can't No, Ah, uh, I, you know, I, I don't do a lot of pranks. I uh, haven't done much, but um, I do have one that I'm not sure it was a prank. It might also be a felony. So, uh, <laughs> I was trying to think of a good one for you. And this is the only one I'm like, I got to tell this one. Uh, it might, I'm serious. It might be a felony. Oh, uh, so here's what happened. When I was in college, I got a job at uh, the now defunct shop. I'll just say it's shop go because they're closed down. Um, yeah. And it was, you know, when you're 19 years old, it's the the first job you should have. And it was a terrible job. I got, it got paid nothing and got to do all the worst jobs. I basically worked in the back room, moving heavy stuff back and forth for hours and hours on end. Uh, the worst shifts, the 4 a.m. shift, you know, every day. It was awful. Anyway, 
So the reason I did it, though, is because my friend who got me the job said, after one year, you get this big raise. So stick it out for a year, you get the big raise, and then you make good money. And I'm like, okay. So I get to one year, and they call me in for one, my one-year review. And, ah, oh, you're doing great. You work so hard. And I'm like, okay, well, do I get my raise? They're like, no, sorry. Uh, three, three, a couple months ago, you took a week off to – because I, I was playing baseball in California, and I had to go to California to go play baseball. Oh, I'm like, nice. yeah, we started your time over. And I was like, what? And no one told me. They just did it. So, you know, 19-year-old Petty Nick um, – Older Nick would have handled this much differently. Petty <laughs> Nick decides, you know what? I'm going to stick it to him and I'm going to, I guess they, it's called quiet quitting, but it really <laughs> wasn't quiet quitting because I wasn't doing the bare minimum. I was doing nothing. I go to work, I'd clock in and then just sit and do nothing. And I figure, okay, I'll get some pay for this. Eventually after a couple of days, they'll find me and they'll fire me and I'll take unemployment, whatever. Well, Lisa... No one said anything. <laughs> and this went on for weeks. Weeks I did this. So I'm like, they're not firing. So finally I go in and I punch in and then just leave. And then come <laughs> back in at the end of the shift and punch out. And no one said anything. Weeks turned into months. I swear. <laughs> and then I was dating a girl at the time who was pre-law. And uh, she's like, and at this, during this time, I had gotten another job. So I'd punch in at one job, leave, go do another job. They come back to this job, punch out of that job. Yeah, it was, it was wild. As so I told her about this, like, ah, I got this thing, you know, they screwed me, so I'm screwing them back. She's like, you know, oh I, I think that's theft, Nick. I'm like, oh. whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, it's a prank. It's like, no, no, you're stealing from that's theft. I'm like, well, then she's like, if you st if, if it's over $2,000, that's a felony. You go to prison. I'm like, oh, no. So wow. quickly read. So the so the I what started as I guess would be a prank like haha on you like turned to be into a prank on me oh my pranking gosh. myself apparently no one knew and I went so I ended up going and then quitting eventually it had a very unceremonious or uh, unclimactic ending but uh uh <laughs> yeah, like we sure miss Nick around here doing all the things <laughs> you know it's probably a, a indicative of why that story isn't around anymore. There was one point, though, like I had in the back room, like <laughs> upstairs in the back corner, had built like a little cubby out of like shampoo boxes and was <laughs> and set up a TV and would sit back there for hours. Months I did this. And what no kind of shampoo? Me. Dove. It was a dove hut. Yeah. I don't know. A dove hut. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah. Oh, so. my gosh. So mm -hmm. remember Office Space, the movie with Jennifer Livingston's brother? Oh yeah, yeah. And and he was doing similar. So if nobody's mm -hmm. seen that movie, for gosh sakes, you're going to now. It's fantastic. And the less he did, the more he got promoted. So that's why I was picturing you getting your own parking space. Uh, uh, yeah, he ended up as a manager or whatever it was. Like that's similar right. story, but you did it. I yeah, I thought you were gonna talk about the stapler guy who like was getting paychecks. Milton. So they just like yeah, Milton. With his but, red uh, swing yeah. stapler. Yes. Oh yeah, they, my yeah. gosh, Nick. That's make me the ridiculous. VP of Shopco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great story. Hopefully, Thank hopefully you. none of them. No wonder you didn't marry that girl. I mean, what a downer. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> laws. Laws, uh. Kel. All my money's gone. <laughs> She's probably right, though. I'm glad she said something because, like, right. I'm a but bit of a warrior. As soon as she said that, it, like, all of a sudden, like, you know, you're 19. You don't think about consequences. No. <laughs> like, oh, shit. I got to I gotta go quit my job. <laughs> before anyone before I get locked up. Yeah, yeah. Before I get to sit <laughs> in a different kind of cave for a while. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So. Oh, I am honored to have chatted with you, Nick Peterson. And oh, people need to find your articles it. on Wisconsin News Today. Yep. And then check out the Camp Crystal Lake comedy show that's coming up. Comedy Bash, pardon me. Yep. And so in, you don't want to mm -hmm. miss that. And so follow Nick Peterson on Facebook because he's crazy. And you guys should go back and listen to all of Lisa's podcast. The one episode with the woman who does um, the uh, How to Build a Sex Room. Your episodes are great, but that episode alone, 
absolutely fantastic. I ended up listening to it again. That woman, your and the camaraderie, you, the the bounce back and forth you guys had that conversation was fantastic. So please go back Aww. and listen to all the episodes, but go back and listen to that episode alone. You will not regret it. Miss Melanie, she is fantastic. Yeah, and she yes. is just she shares it all. Oh. Well, thank you for that plug. I appreciate that. Thank well, you. we'll see you Friday, October thirteenth. But remember, yes. we can only be strangers once, and I invite you to stay weird. Cheers. Ha, <laughs>